Sports Link, brought to you by Cure Alkaline Water. This year's East Boys baseball title game went down to the very last at bat. Notre Dame led 5-3 in the top of the 10th inning. League MVP Ashton Tatautau reached third off a bad throw to first and a pass ball to home plate. Jace Gumatautau draws a walk and gets to first, putting runners on the corners for G-Dub. CJ Tenorio also drew a walk and loaded the bases for Joaquin Lujan with two outs. Lujan hit a single to score a run. Gecko still trailing 5-4. Bases loaded again, full count for Aiden Gumatautau. Infield playing short, Gumatautau rips a shot over the left fielder's head, scoring two runs for the come from behind win. Honestly, my coach just said all heart, and I had to be there for my team. I wasn't doing well in the beginning, but I know I had to be there for my team. So proud of them. They worked super hard from the beginning till tonight, and I just, I, I'm really proud of them, especially the seniors. They're awesome, man. These guys deserve it. They work super hard. Our team just had to keep our head in the game and pick each other up, and just our sticks had to come in the last inning, and everyone was stroking. Everyone came ready to play. It was me. For my seniors, I know they love it. And for my boy, that Jeremiah Sablon, I couldn't be here. He earned it too. In jiu-jitsu news, eight-year-old Sage Cruz will be one of an estimated 4,000 jiu-jitsu competitors at the Jiu-Jitsu World League. Sage was ranked second nationally in his age and weight class last year. I feel good about the competition and I, I hope I can get gold in the competition. I've been doing like sparring uh, outside of the gym and uh, and I uh, do like the adult class. I like the sparring and I like to do it because uh, it's like fun. Cruz attends McCool Elementary and has been training in mixed martial arts for the last four years. Besides jujitsu, Sage holds a blue belt in Taekwondo and trains at the Guam Muay Thai gym three days a week. Sage will be representing Guam in the Great Belt 50 to 59 pound division. He took gold the last time he was on the mat. I'm uh, really motivated to do the competition. So I'm looking forward to getting first place and like to, uh, to, sh to come back with uh, the gold medal. I would wear the like patches to like uh, show that I'm from Guam. My favorite movie is uh, Bola. The JFK Islanders boys and girls paddling team took first in the one-mile distance race at this year's ESA Paddling Championships. JFK closed out this year's season with a strong finish at Matapang Beach. Sotero boys one-mile race, JFK first at 11.14. FD came in second at 11.30. Simon Sanchez in third at 11.49. The kids are very excited. They're, they were very disappointed last year because of COVID that we didn't get to have a season. And our um, organizer, Nikki, she's she really fought hard to have a season. In the beginning, we had some complications, but she worked hard with um, our athletic directors, the public health, and all the coaches and students and parents to make sure that the season happened because she just wanted the, she wants the community to grow just like we all do. And it also, um, the community growing starts with our youth. Sotero girls one mile, JFK placed first at 12.58. Simon Sanchez came in second at 13.08. Teason High was third at 13.17. Mixed one mile race, JFK taking first overall at 11.56. Simon Sanchez came in second at 12.32.43. Ukudu rounded off third at 12.32.72. Sotero half mile race, FD placed first at 523. JFK came in second at 531. Ukudu was third at 549. Sotero half mile race, JFK's girls came in first at 614. Teason High was second at 630.30. Simon Sanchez was third at 630.92. Mixed half mile race, Simon Sanchez was first overall at 5.49, JFK second at 5.54, Ukudu was third at six minutes. In soccer news, Janae Terria, a standout from Guam's national program, has been accepted into the United States Merchant Marine Academy and has also earned a spot on its women's soccer roster. The U.S. MMA's women's soccer program just started and is currently 
in its developmental phase before entering NCAA Division III competition in the fall of 2022. I'm super excited for this opportunity to develop my education because there's just so many new experiences that I'll be able to go through and new opportunities that I can conquer with the support of my family and all the support from the island. And I'm just overwhelmed with joy and thank the Lord that this, this opportunity was given to me because I'm, I'm super grateful and excited to represent myself, my family, my island, um, and to further develop my skills in, within my soccer career. Janae will be a part of history as one of the players on the Academy's first ever women's soccer team. My heart is racing. Okay, each, each coach that has spent their time helping me on and off the pitch has, has really touched my heart because they, they've seen me grow from this little girl who just wanted to play and now continuing that is, I can't even put it into words on how thankful and excited I am to show what Guam can do, but also what these wonderful coaches have done to help me. And I'm excited to see the future girls come up and see where they're going next. The Islanders took advantage of having home field against Ukudu winning this year's ESA boys title 6-0 over the Bulldogs. Taylor Bonner started the scoring in the 21st minute off an assist from Noah Mueller. Noah Mueller with the perfect pass, making sure he wasn't offsides, checking the ref as he made his way towards the goal. Nice little tap in by Mueller for the 2-0 lead. Shout out to the homies for supporting. Corner kick, Bonner fighting for position, gets in and seals the deal with the header. Taylor helping himself to the ball. Don't mind if I do. Bonner resets the ball at midfield after the celebration. Emilio Babauta takes the penalty kick. Initial shot was blocked, but Babauta, with the heads up play, follows up and hits the shot on the second attempt. Caden Rivera with the beautiful feed to Christian Quito, who takes the shot after the ball bounced off an Ukuru defender. Quito answers a few minutes later with his second goal of the match. I have to show the play from beginning to end. Quito like Debo out there, flying by defenders on his way to the Bulldog side of the field. He shows his accuracy and ball control, scoring the last point of the match in the 79th minute. All the hard work that we had to put into practice, into training, put it into the games. We train how we play, and we play hard. And that's how we always win our games. This trophy, it's my baby. It feels wonderful to walk away my last year of high school with the championship. Uh, all of our boys wanted this year. Despite the numbers that came out this year, all of us worked really hard, and uh, we just took the chap. When I first started playing soccer and football in general, I always taught it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So once I missed it, I kept my head up and went for the second. Second effort counts, third effort counts always. In the beginning of the game, we were playing to their pace and playing very slow and sloppy. So, like I said, towards the end, we started to pick it up and play our way and we finished off with a win. Aliada was selected as one of the team captains for Dartmouth women's rugby team for the 2021-2022 season. Ali plays scrum half and will be entering her senior year in the fall. She is majoring in anthropology and minoring in global health. When I first got the word that I was even nominated to be team captain, um, I was shocked, I was surprised, because if you had told me freshman year that I was going to be the captain of the team my senior year, I wouldn't have believed you. I was shy, I was, I was just, I was a very quiet person, but I think in the last year I stepped up and I um, started to be more vocal and lead more, so I was shocked, but I was happy and humbled that I would receive the nomination and then later the vote to become the team captain. Training for the preseason starts August 20th. The team is looking at about 40 girls on the roster. That includes a strong senior lineup and underclassmen, along with a handful of walk-ons. Ali is fourth on the team in tries, scoring 30 points. She also, she also, she also walk on. I set the goal to win the national championship again, take it back from Harvard. You know, we lost the chance to do that last year, so that is one of my primary goals this year. Uh, we're having strong leaders on the team. We have national players. We have 
U20s players and just people from all over the world that I think we're really capable of getting this national championship back. The Islanders down 10 with 4.02 left in the second quarter. Kristen Guzman goes hard to the basket with the floater. JFK managed to put together a 5-0 run. Friars led 21-16 with under three to play before halftime. MVP Matt Santos testing the inside, getting in for two points. Jeremiah Kentucky finished the game with six points. Elijah Garrido caught fire before the half, scoring a couple of free throws and beating the buzzer right before the clock expired. Garrido goes glass for the finish. Blaze Addis started off the third quarter with the spot up three. Santos draws over the defender and kicks the ball out to Ada in the corner. Blaze gets the bounce to keep the home team ahead. Amram Yobe pushing the ball down court finds Mark Morales setting up in the corner. Morales barely gets the shot over the outstretched hands of Santos for the three. Blaze filling it. Jeremiah David to Daryl Robles to Ada for another three. Yobe with his signature take to the rim. Difficulty level with 10. Amram somehow still able to get the shot off. FD will play St. Paul in the championship game after holding down home court 62-42. The Warriors advance after beating Ukudu 73-53. There are 5,000 students attending Olivet Nazarene University outside of Chicago. Coach Bob Harmon will be on island May 31st through June 5th. Harmon will be visiting schools and talking to counselors coaches, students, and their parents about potential scholarships. You know, just to give the kids an option and just to talk and, and introduce our school because options are a powerful thing. You know, it's, it's a really powerful thing when you can choose where you want to go. And I know our school might not be for everyone, one, but it's a choice. It's an option. And so what I'd like to do is not only for football players and volleyball players, men's volleyball players, but just students in general. And, you know, we already have a couple students already committed to come here from Guam. And, uh, you know, we've got a great ROTC program. And one of the girls from uh, Cameron Calvo from JFK won a, 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 an ROTC scholarship. She's coming this fall. The athletic program has 22 different sports and has been ranked in the top 25 in 17 out of the 22. Multiple scholarships are still available for athletics, music and art, esports, ROTC, academic, need-based, and yellow ribbon programs. You know, just apply, just apply to school, talk to everybody, see what, where your kid fits and, and, you know, just, just reach and, and try. It doesn't really take much time and, and energy to apply to a school. And you've got some great teachers and counselors at the schools in Guam. They've been very gracious with me. They get information to us and then just, uh, you know, kind of look and listen. Try to apply to as many schools as you can and then let the chips fall where they may and kind of see where you fit. Sports Link, brought to you by Cure Alkaline Water.